Hey guys, Brian here, and in today's video, this was recommended by Jelly to kind of come up with just a short list of things that you might not be aware that the game already has in it. Examples are your expanded inventory, how to register favored teleport destinations, how to work with your targeting and your filters, as well as how to mark things on the map and share them with friends. So we're going to cover quite a little bit, uh, hopefully to give you guys some kind of, I guess, insight but I'm also interested in what your thoughts are. Are there things that I missed? Are there things that you feel that when you discovered should be shared and for some reason people aren't connecting with it? So let's go ahead and get this started and kick this off the right way. Boom! So let's go ahead and talk about teleporting. I'm sure you've seen these Aetherite crystals all around the world and in the different zones that you play, but it can be very expensive to continue have to teleport, especially in earlier parts of the game. But even in later parts, why not save the money? You're going to be able to set any Aetherite as a favorite destination. You can have up to three, and it's really simple to do so. So let me go ahead and show you how if you haven't ever done this before. Anytime you've already attuned to an Aetherite, you can select it and you got a, these options. You've got set home point, register favored destination, and register free destination. First, if I try to do a free destination, it's going to give me an error. If you use the Square Enix security token, you can have up to one free destination to teleport to always. However, it does require that. If you decide not to use it, then you're not going to have that option available to you. Register Favor Destination allows you to always teleport to this Aetherite at a reduced rate. You can have up to three, and so you can see that any ones that you've registered as a Favor Destination show up with the star. They will also show up with this information in the teleport list as well, so you can always see it easily. The other option is Register or Set Home Point. Doing so will confirm that you want to change it from your current home point. In this case, mine is Ulda the Steps of Nald. Setting yes will have me anytime I uh, set return to teleport right here. So if I say return, it's going to ask me if I want to return and I can say yes. You can use return and it's got a 15 minute cooldown. If you do pass away in the game, if you get knocked out, you will automatically return to your return point. And then within dungeons, it's always at the start of the dungeon itself. And you can see now that I've got my little cooldown here. Teleport brings up your menu, and you can see here that I've set Central Thanalin as my favorite destination. And so the cost of it, not only is it cheaper uh, because I'm closer, but it's also cheaper because it's a favorite destination. I would recommend doing this, especially in the early parts of the game. I'd recommend setting Horizon and Camp Drybone <laughs> as at least two of those positions, uh, at least until you've somewhat cleared the 2.0 or 2.x story. You're going to be teleporting to those locations quite often. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about inventory. By default, your inventory is going to be set to this sized window. You have four bags as well as key items uh, and crystals that you can display. And you can easily, in the controller or the, or the keyboard, you can page through these things. Same is also true for any retainers you might have. Looking at their inventory, you're going to see the same kind of approach. They have more bags than you do, but it's still in that same small condensed window. So if you want to use the expanded inventory system, it's very simple to do. System, character configuration, and then go into item settings. Here you'll see inventory interface and retainer inventory interface. Set those both to expanded, hit apply, and enjoy your new inventory view where you see all your bags at once and then you have just one tab for your key items and crystals. The same thing is also applied to your retainer as well. It's big, it's beautiful, and I would highly recommend it. So there's a lot of targeting options and I want to go over a couple of them here for you right now. So again, we're going to jump back into system character configuration and then under control settings. You have a target tab, which is going to be real important. You have this option that says automatically lock on target when initiating auto attack. Personally, when I started the game, I turned this on and it was very helpful. But then as I moved on and learned, I turned it off. But I'm going to show you what that means and really actually how you lock on a target anyway with the controller. Couple other potential options are highlight potential targets. So whenever this is turned on and you can highlight anything, you're gonna give it a nice little yellow outline as opposed to having it turned off, hitting apply, 
and then you can just see that, yes, the mouse changes, you can interact with it, but sometimes that visual additive is all that you need to be able to understand what you can and cannot interact with. So then under your target filters, you have several items here. So you have two targeting modes when your weapon is sheathed and when your weapon is drawn. So pressing down on the right stick, or sorry, left stick will allow you to easily uh, sheathe your weapon and, and draw it. But what that means is that you can then have custom filters for each. So when your weapons are away, maybe you want to be able to target party members. Maybe you want to be able to see NPCs and objects. But when your weapons are out, maybe you only want to focus in on enemies. Maybe you don't want to worry about any party members, alliance members, or anything like that. So this is a way that you can really customize how and what you're targeting out, whether you're on a controller or on keyboard and mouse. You also have this option for enabling expanded, or I guess, filter customization. What this allows you to do is cycle through various filters by easily holding the left bumper and pressing the face button that is corresponding to it. The default is LB and Y is all, LB and B is enemies, LB and X is friends, and LB and A is just solely party members. So whether you're doing up, down, left, or right, you're always going to be focusing in on that. The best way in Procha I always like to use is up and down is cycling through party members and left and right is gonna be enemies, NPCs, and, and the like. That's why usually, no matter what, I always have party members turned off in any of my filters just so that I don't get confused. So let's look at how that actually works. So I turned on auto target when auto attacking. So you can see that immediately I can now move left and right from the target. If I back up, I back up slowly and I move forward, I move in slowly. I'm always going to be looking at this target. I can press down on the left stick to remove the lock and that allows me to move around freely. Where this might get you in trouble is <laughs> if you're doing some, some kind of mechanic and you're not well aware that you're auto locked in. That's why I would recommend leaving that off and then only using the lock on target when necessary to help you move about. Now for new players who might not know, typically the only thing you really need to move around for is getting out of any bad AOE that they place on the ground. Uh, moving around like I'm doing right now is not gonna give you any added benefit, especially if you're being targeted. I see this a lot in new players where they feel like, oh, they can always just try to attack from behind and they're not gonna get hit, but that's not the case. Standing out of the AOEs that you'll see the, the targeting on the ground will in fact do that for you. So one of the really great features about the map is that you can actually mark a location on it. So you can sit here and say, let's say you wanted to tell everybody that we needed to go to this particular spot on the map. With the mouse and keyboard, you can actually control right click and it's going to put a flag on that map. And you can see it here on your mini map, you can see it on your map. It also adds this little command flag to the chat. Now, whether you're in party chat, link shell chat, whatever, you can always then send that and then anybody who can click on that, well, it will add that same flag to their map as well. Where this is hugely valuable is when you're doing various maps and hunts, being able to, as a group, be able to communicate your destination without always the need to have auto follow on. Or if no matter what, this like if I want to go into any map zone, I can put a flag there. So you can hit this little up button. We're gonna go ahead and just explore the world real quick. Let's go to the Black Shroud, Central Shroud, and right in here, we're gonna go ahead and pick on Bent Branch. I haven't discovered yet, so I'll, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a flag listed right there. Again, now that's shared in chat, I'm gonna hit say, and you can see Central Shroud and the location. And so clicking on that uh, with, with your controller or with the mouse and keyboard will add that location to your map as well. Very helpful. Now, how do you do that with a mouse and, uh, with just a controller? Well, as you move in the map, it updates. So you can see an actual command that says map link right here, and that's LB and RB. So if I just move around and press LB and RB, it's going to do the same thing and add the option in the chat as well. So regardless of mouse and keyboard or controller, you can help communicate where you're going. So if you guys are out there trying to do Aquapolis runs, I'd highly recommend checking this out. If you're already well aware of it, this is something that just came to my attention a couple of weeks ago. So shout out for Brian, who actually showed me that as well. Same name, same awesome beard. Well, I guess this is better, but you get the point. Anyway, I just wanted to share that and hope that is a big help for you as well. Okay, so now let's talk about being able to keep your UI clean, especially when going into several duties and things of that nature. System character configuration and UI settings. Under the HUD tab, you've got a lot of options here to be able to turn on and turn off various features, but let's focus in on your kind of quest and duty list. A, you can set the number of quests that's gonna show up in your duty list at any particular time from one to five. 
but you can also set hide the duty list during instanced and non-instanced duty, which this is unimaginably helpful. Whenever you go into a raid, whenever you go into anything, um, you always have those quests on the side. Well, they're really not important for what you're doing, so I would recommend turning those on, uh, keeping your UI clean. You can easily then use that space with your HUD layout to stack any options that might be valuable to you when doing that kind of content. It's up to you, but I really want to show that off as well. A couple other important things here. You can turn on and off as many clocks as you want in the system itself. So you want to see the game time, your local time, and the server time. By all means, go for it and have fun. If you, uh, you can turn on all three, or you can just leave one on at any time. You also have a couple of other options here. And one of the things that I think is the most important thing for anybody to turn on is to display the target's remaining HP percentage. So having that on, you can see that I already have it on as well. I'm going to hit apply. You can see here that now I'm engaged with his opponent, his HP percentage is slowly dipping down. This is going to show his remaining HP percentage. You're not going to see it at 100, but as you engage targets, you're going to see that listed here as well. And this works for party members as well as enemies. And lastly, again under character configuration, UI settings, and HUD, you have this option that says display only the detrimental effects that you inflict. Where this is really important, especially is in later in the game. If you have a lot of dots that you apply, sometimes you're not going to be able to see them in the list of all the dots there. Yours are going to be colored green, so when you have tons of allies, it can be rather difficult to be able to manage that and see and keep that, you know, your dots up. So turning that on will only reduce it down just to yours, which will make it easier to see and easier to manage. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope that maybe you learned something. Let me know in the comments below if there's something that you learned that was surprising that you haven't, that has always been in the game and you just weren't well aware of it. But until then, let's go ahead and pound it. And I hope to see you in my next video. Until then, take care. Hey, it's me. Thanks so much for watching this video. You should click here to subscribe and here to maybe check out some more of our videos. So again, thanks for watching. We hope you like this video. We hope you subscribe and join our community. Let us know in the comments below what you think, and we'll see you next time.